what's up everyone welcome back to my youtube channel welcome for the first time if you're new here my name is courtney capano so excited to have you Welcome to this video. This is 10 things I wish that I knew before my wedding day. And I want to mention that I did a video. Uh, maybe you've seen it before. If not, definitely check it out. It was 10 things I wish I knew before wedding planning. It's actually my most popular YouTube video. It has a lot of views and I think that I offered some pretty good advice in that video. So definitely check that out. And I want to just note that this is different from that video because at that point I had not had my wedding day yet. This video is now, I had my wedding day. What are some things that I wish I knew before my wedding day? That all being said, I do want to mention that my wedding day was literally the best day of my entire life. I did not have any sort of meltdown. I did not feel stressed the whole day. Any one of my family members or friends watching this can test to that. I loved every single moment and I soaked up every moment from start to finish. So this video is not going to be like my biggest wedding day regrets because I genuinely don't have any of those to offer to you. I know a lot of people put wedding day regrets videos out there but I unfortunately can't offer that to you because it was the best day of my whole life. However, there are things that I wish I knew before my wedding day just so I didn't worry so much beforehand. Things that I realized no one really cares about. Things that I realized are not worth the stress. So all that to say, this video is just going to be me telling you about some things that I learned um, and kind of was able to reflect on after my wedding day and I wanted to share them with you because if you are a bride, if you are a groom right now planning your wedding, you naturally are going to worry about so many things. You're going to have to make choices that maybe weren't your top choices and you're kind of bummed about that just because life happens. Sometimes some things are too expensive. Sometimes something that you really want is already booked. Sometimes you worry too much about the guest experience that you don't focus on you and your partner. And I just wanna tell you all of the ways and things that I just wish that I didn't worry about before my wedding day and things that I learned looking back on it. And so hopefully that makes sense, hopefully it's helpful, and hopefully you have the best day of your entire life on your wedding day because that's what you're supposed to do. So I'll help you do that by sharing some of my thoughts. I am going to use my little list on my phone like I always do. The list is in no order. First on my list is that I wish that I didn't worry so much leading up to my wedding about how fast the day was going to go. You've probably heard it from people in your life. Everyone likes to tell you, oh, enjoy it. It's going to go by so fast. Soak up every moment. Like it is good advice and it's coming from a good place, but why should you be worried so much about it flying by when you can actually enjoy every single second? And it does go by fast. Life is fast. Every moment in life goes by fast, especially when they're exciting times. But there are so many ways that you can make sure the day feels slow for you and feels like you can just savor all of the best moments. And I talk about this in that other video I mentioned and all of the ways that we made the day even more meaningful. And um, now that we've had the wedding, I really just want to suggest some ideas and ways that you can make sure the day is yours and make sure that it's not dedicated to you just feeling stressed or overwhelmed or socializing. A wedding is meant for socializing, but it is not the number one reason that you're there that day. And so um, a few ideas, right? So of course there's gonna be meaning in every moment, whether you're doing cake cutting, whether you're doing a first look, whether you're doing um, a first dance, like reading your vows, like all of these things, whether you're traditional or not, you're gonna be doing certain things that are gonna have meaning on your wedding day and that will help the day you know be brought back to you and your partner but I think that there are so many things that you can do to intentionally take time to just pause and slow down and take a look at what's going on around you and that helps the day to not fly by and so um, for us one I know I just mentioned doing a first look I think is so so important and having the day go by um, or not go by so fast. One of my favorite moments of the day was doing a private first look with Jonathan and us just having a few moments together in the woods, just us. We were able to kind of go for a little bit of a walk to get back up to the venue and we just had a moment to just hug each other and it was the most special time of the whole day, honestly. It was the first time he saw me. I liked it better that not everybody else was around because our reactions to each other were just organic and um, that is just such a great way to also allow you to be with your partner a little bit earlier so you're not 
you know, starting the wedding later when you walk down the aisle. Like you're able to kind of start the fun early so it makes the day a little bit longer. After the ceremony, I highly recommend having just a few moments alone with your partner, whether it's get, grabbing a drink. Him and I went to this private library area and just like talked even just for five minutes. And it was also one of my favorite parts of the day. Lastly, we did a private last dance. This is something that I think is so special and we once all of our guests were lining up outside to do a formal exit with candles him and I took the dance floor just him and I we didn't have any photographers videographers nothing it was just us um, and we danced to a song that was so special and it was one of my favorite moments it allowed us to just have one final I don't know, cherished moment together before heading to the after party with all of our guests again. But basically just don't worry about the day flying by. It will, but it's going to be so special while it's flying by and try to just have little moments that um, allow you to take pause throughout the day. Okay, so next is a little sassy on this one, but I wrote, you literally will not care about any minor mishaps, and if you do, then that's a you problem. <laughs> it's a little bit harsh, but I do stand by that statement, and I can say that, again, the whole day of my wedding, I felt no stress, none. And there were definitely little things that went wrong, <laughs> little things that the people around me were getting a little worked up, but I was just like, I'm gonna sip my champagne and like, Honestly, this is my day and I can't control anything. Like all I can control is how I feel right now. So moral of the story here, the moral of this example is that you are in control of your stress on your wedding day. You're not in control of all these other little things that can happen. Like for example, Jonathan and I, wrote letters to each other to read at Willowdale. And we had a videographer downstairs and a videographer upstairs who were like recording us opening the letters, reading them, whatever. And so my videographer upstairs gets a call from downstairs and I can hear Jonathan, we hadn't even seen each other yet. And I can hear Jonathan like freaking out because he forgot my letter to him at home. I just like laughed. I was like, Jonathan, it's okay. Like, it, I don't know, like you can't, get upset like things happen Jonathan I thought it was cute Jonathan was like so nervous that he just forgot the letter and to be quite honest and to be transparent with you I gave him my gift in the morning with the letter and my gift was boudoir photos and he was a little distracted so he forgot the letter it's okay but we like lost the ring pillow for a little bit and I was like he can just the ring bearer can just walk, strut down the aisle he doesn't have to have a pillow in his hand like these are just examples from my experience in my wedding and there were definitely some other little things that I just remember noticing like the next day when I was thinking back to the day. Like nothing the day of bothered me at all. Like I was so happy and excited and like full of joy and I did not care about the details whatsoever. Like I forgot I just planned the whole wedding. I literally just strolled up ready to party, you know? The day of your wedding you shouldn't be thinking about all of the details that you put together and making sure they come to fruition like you should just be focused on you and your partner maybe that's easier said than done um but i definitely worried a little bit before my wedding about being stressed the day of and i wish that i didn't worry because i had complete control over that and i wasn't stressed so third up is that getting ready is actually one of the best parts of the whole day and honestly throughout this whole list i'm probably going to be talking about a million things that were my favorite part of the day but Getting ready was absolutely one of the best parts. One, um, if you're a bride and you are with the closest women in your life, all in one room, getting ready for the best day of your life, celebrating you. And that was so special to me. We were all just happy, we were giddy. A piece of advice that I'll offer with this um, part of the list is to not have a photographer or videographer there while you're getting ready. I loved that all my girls were relaxed. No one was worried about a video or a camera or a photo being taken or whatever. We were having so much fun. We were reminiscing. We were complimenting each other as we were getting ready. It was so stress-free and relaxing. I had a bunch of gifts that I gave to them and they were in their little robes that I got and it was so special i gave them letters and they didn't have to feel pressure that they were being recorded opening them and like it was just so special to me you can have your photographer and videographer come to the place where you're getting married a little bit later and they can still get clips of you girls like being together getting ready or guys again if you were a groom watching this but i just so recommend not having anyone there while you're getting ready and i worried about that and that's kind of the point of this um, number on my list is that I worried about should I have a photographer there should I pay for them to come earlier 
am I gonna wish those moments were captured like no moments like that are captured in your heart I know that's lame but they are and you don't need them to be photographed because it was just so much more special that it was just us us gals and also a tip with that is to create a wedding morning playlist if you want mine I will link it down below I actually think it is like the best wedding morning playlist because it's powerful songs that are meaningful and that are sweet around love around friendships like girl power oldies new songs is beyonce on there like it is a great wedding morning playlist and i still listen to it now it's definitely something that i'm so glad i did um creating a playlist so getting ready is such a special part of your day don't like rush it and savor that time with your most special gals all right, so next up is that your dress comfort matters. It matters, okay? I cannot tell you how much of a game changer it was that I was comfortable all night long. And I'm going to talk about all the details of that and what I mean and things that you can do to make sure you're comfortable. This is also the same thing for men. Make sure that your suit is comfortable, which you're lucky most of the time suits are more comfortable than dresses in general. Also just make sure that your shoes are comfortable and definitely break them in beforehand. Jonathan wore his shoes a few times to make sure he was comfortable that day because as much as you think like you're going to be bopping around not thinking about comfort and that's not true your dress comfort matters when i was trying on dresses there were some that looked so good but i just knew i could not dance in it like i every dress that i try on this is a huge tip dance around in that thing don't just come out and be like oh my gosh i look snatched i'm good no move around drop it low and make sure that you are good to be bopping around the dance floor on your wedding day and just to be socializing sitting down standing up i was so comfortable and i'm so glad that i got a dress that allowed that to happen same thing with shoes i took dance lessons with jonathan and my father and i wore my wedding shoes to those lessons to break them in and they were perfectly broken in so definitely a tip if you're taking dance lessons wear your shoes you don't have to worry about them being like brand new the day of and crisp mine still looked fine and i had worn them a few times and another thing okay so this may not apply to all of you because maybe some of you don't sweat you just glitter but i'd be sweating i'll never forget like i had tried my dress on a few different times to be tailored and i was never in it for more than like 15 20 minutes maybe and so close to the wedding day i was at one of my later fittings and i think i was just chit chatting with my seamstress for a while and she was making some alterations that just took longer and i'm not kidding you i was standing there like dripping sweat down my legs i don't care if that's tmi like i was sweating and you know what i mean when like your booty cheeks just start sweating and i was like i cannot have this happen on my wedding day all this to say is that you can get sweat wicking underwear on amazon and or wherever you want i can try to link if any of my brides would like i can try to link the pair i got it was a thong nude pair of underwear it came in a pack i have like a ton of them now and they're sweat wicking so they absorb your sweat and the day of we call it like a perfect 75 degree june day but i didn't sweat like i did i wasn't <laughs> so something to consider because i would have never thought of that until i was in my dress for a long period of time and i was like whoa we gotta handle that comfort really does matter on your wedding day and you will thank yourself when you are so comfy cozy beautiful and not sweating on your wedding day so take those tips if you want them all right so my next tip is around your rehearsal dinner and so i know everyone's situation is different but basically my tip is to have your rehearsal dinner two days before the wedding no matter what and so let me explain what i mean by no matter what i know that some people have weddings that are destination or have weddings that people are traveling into i want to challenge the idea that everyone traveling needs to come to your rehearsal dinner like i don't think that's the case to be honest and if anything i think having your rehearsal dinner be a little bit more intimate two days before the wedding one is a little bit sweeter you're gonna see all the people traveling in on the wedding day and hang with them the day after the wedding have a brunch i just think if you have this big party the night before the wedding one people are going to get drunk they are going to not feel the best the next day and it, i don't know i just think it takes away a little bit from the wedding day for a lot of reasons so my biggest piece of advice is have it two days before um, or if you absolutely have to have it the night before plan it out so it's a little bit earlier so everyone gets to bed early because one that way people are not getting 
tanked the night before your wedding because I'm sorry as much as it's fun to party and celebrate like you don't need people showing up hungover to your wedding that stinks it just I'm sorry it just does and two it allows you to have like a nice intimate night with just your closest again girlfriends or family I'm traditional the night before the wedding I slept away from Jonathan I had just a night in with my mother and my two maid of honors and we ordered room service and we just hung out gossiped till like midnight and then we went to bed and we didn't drink we didn't party like we just chatted and we just got excited for the next day and I wouldn't trade that and I think people just get really excited about planning a rehearsal dinner because it's another party but you don't realize that there are people that are going to party really hard and they're not going to be feeling good on your wedding day and that just is not worth it in my opinion just a tip if you're considering your rehearsal dinner the night before um maybe think about two nights before okay so next up i did do another video by the way if you couldn't tell i love talking about wedding content i do a good amount of wedding related videos but i talk about this tip in a video that was like what not to forget on your wedding day um again i'll link it up here so that you can click on it if you'd like but the tip here is that absolutely the little things that you remember to bring on your wedding day do matter. I'm gonna go through some things that we had on our wedding day that we ended up really needing. We were happy that we brought them. So this is very like simple and straightforward, but we had Tums, eye drops, tampons, a steamer, blotting wipes to get the oil off your face, comb, makeup, touch-ups, like extra makeup, bobby pins, lotion, body tape, sticky boobs. Honestly, I talk about so many more things in that video. So if you were thinking about what to pack for the wedding day, go watch that video. Or if you are a bride, you can delegate and ask like, hey, bridesmaid, can you please make sure you bring these things to the day of the wedding? Like give responsibilities to people, they want to help. And I also wrote here, this has like nothing to do with what I just said, but I put it under this tip. And it says, do not get a spray tan and do get fake lashes. We're talking about like accessories and things like that. So I think I wrote, don't get a spray tan because I was planning on getting a spray tan for my wedding and my seamstress actually was like, you absolutely cannot get a spray tan, especially if you are someone that sweats, you will, the sweat will get onto your spray tan. And if you look into it, I know a lot of companies say, no, you could get a spray tan here. We do a great job. It's not going to melt off. Like there's no way to hundred percent determine how your body's going to react on your wedding day with a spray tan with a white dress. So I don't think it's worth it. I'm sorry. I went bed tanning. I did. I'm admitting it. I'm never going to do it again. I'm done. But I wanted to have a nice tan on my wedding day, so I went for like two weeks in a bed, and I honestly am not proud of myself, but my tan looked really good on the day of my wedding. So I did write, get fake lashes. So I definitely think that getting lash extensions like put on that are meant to last a few weeks is so much better than getting lashes by your makeup artist because they're guaranteed to stay on. My tip with that is to test out the lash extensions a few months before your wedding. Maybe try it for your bridal shower or for another event and just make sure that you're good to go. The glue doesn't irritate your skin, anything like that. I didn't melt off with my makeup. I could cry and I was good to go. So just, again, random, random tips there, but don't get a spray tan and do get lash extensions. <laughs> also with lash extensions, it was fun because we went on our honeymoon right away and my lashes just looked great the whole time and I didn't have to do mascara. The order of my videos is never anything normal. Dobby's here to hang out. So moving right along, next is to write your own vows. And honestly, like everything on this list, do whatever is going to float your own boat or whatever you are comfortable with. But I know for me, I always knew I was going to write my own vows. Jonathan felt really strongly that we should write our own vows. I felt strongly. I was nervous though to get through my vows that was the one thing like right before the ceremony i was talking with my dad and i was getting a little bit like worked up not stressed but like emotional because i really wanted to get through my vows because i was so worried about crying through them or not being able to really get my message to jonathan about what i'm vowing to him and I can tell you now after getting through the vows that even if you do get choked up, which you will most likely, um, you do get through them and it's so beautiful when they are your own vows. It's still beautiful when you're just repeating after the officiant or doing like the standard vows, but for me being able to tell Jonathan personally what I vow to him like in our relationship was so special and hearing his vows to me was again one of my favorite parts of the day. The whole day was my favorite part of the day, if you couldn't tell. But that's just a piece of advice that 
someone is giving to you that has gone through a wedding wrote our own vows and i think it's just so special i've been to so many weddings where everyone's vows are just a little different they're always personal to your story with your partner and i think it's just so special to do that so that's just it for that point. Write your own vows. Even if you're really nervous, you're gonna be so proud of yourself for doing it. And if you do get anxious to speak in front of crowds, just look at your partner and focus on that. That's all that matters anyway, so. All right, just three more here. And the next I kind of touched on a bit, um, but something that I'm so grateful that I did do was take dance lessons before my wedding. And I absolutely think everyone should do it. If you're not a dancer, if you are a dancer, both are great reasons to take lessons. And I took dance lessons with my father and with Jonathan. So I wouldn't trade that for the world. My father and I actually did a choreographed fun breakout dance. We did a slow dance for like a minute and a half. And then we did a whole mashup mix up that our DJ put together of fun songs that are meaningful to him and I. And we did a whole outbreak dance. And honestly, I will cherish forever driving into Boston and taking dance lessons with my father. It was so special the day of the wedding, but just those memories of taking dance lessons together. Me and my dad don't often do things just him and I. We're usually with the family, and it was like a period of life or a season of life where him and I were able to kind of have father-daughter date nights. We would go to dinner after, and it was so, so special. So highly recommend that. Oh. You move in definitely take dance lessons with your father or if you're a groom take them with your mother or whoever you're dancing with um it was so special also jonathan and i took dance lessons and same thing we made a whole date night out of it him and i only took one dance lesson because you know we're very able people like we definitely don't need a dance lesson we can dance well together we've been doing it for 12 years now but it was just so sweet and special to again have a date night and just have a structured lesson with an instructor to just bring us together in a way that we don't usually come together for an hour at length and um especially the opportunity to just take time to dance to your song before your wedding day is special. I don't know, just everything about a dance lesson for your wedding, I'm so here for. And now that I've had the wedding and I'm able to look back on those experiences of taking the lessons with the two most important men in my life, I wouldn't trade that. So if you're thinking about it, definitely do it. Even if it's uncomfortable and weird and your partner doesn't like dancing or you don't like dancing, you're gonna have a great time. The instructor's gonna make you feel comfortable and it's such a sweet memory and experience. So. All right, so next, go on a honeymoon right after if you can. I really feel like this is such a wonderful piece of advice because I know that a lot of people say, wait to go on the honeymoon, spend the weekend with family after your wedding, or wait and go on your honeymoon like a few months later because you're already going to be on a high from the wedding just wait to go on the honeymoon like, there's so many reasons that people wait to go on their honeymoon and i understand that scheduling maybe you can't take a week off from work right after you get married but whatever you do even if it's a mini moon go somewhere to celebrate just you two for a few days a few nights if you can swing your full-blown honeymoon definitely do that right after because you are on a high and you want to ride that high you don't want to go back to work you don't want to go back to normal life you are doing something that is a once in a lifetime experience stay on that cloud and do not come down the day after our wedding we spent it with family, people that were in town that we haven't seen in a while. We did like a day in Salem, Mass, by the water, just hung out, had some drinks, just chilled for the day, and then we left the day after that. So we still did have a day with friends to celebrate and kind of talk about the night, and then we were gone for 11 days on our honeymoon, and it was perfect. We were able to just soak it all up, just him and I, and then when we came back from our honeymoon, everyone still wanted to talk about the wedding, so you definitely get the best of both worlds when you go right away and I again believe that even if you can't go on a full-blown honeymoon go somewhere even if just for the weekend or for two days one night whatever go somewhere to be with your partner it is such a crazy experience to be newlyweds and to be fresh newlyweds that you definitely want to soak that up while you can so highly recommend going away right away for your honeymoon all right and then the last point on my list the last thing that i wish i knew before my wedding is that when people are going to tell you about your wedding 
the best compliment is going to be that they had the most fun night of their life or that they that was the most fun wedding they've ever been to like to me every compliment I've gotten on like decor or whatever has not made me feel nearly as good as the people that are like that was the most fun I've ever had that wedding you could just feel the love in the room that was it was so fun to celebrate you and Jonathan and I'm not going to lie pretty much every person that we talked to about the wedding said it was the best wedding they've ever been to and I don't care if that's bragging I know it's not because it was the best decorated wedding because I really didn't go too crazy with decor I didn't go too crazy with florals I didn't go too crazy with things that I thought were just gonna be wasteful we didn't even give favors I talk about that in my other wedding video I have had so many people just tell me that it was the most fun wedding because they loved celebrating me and Jonathan and they loved how much they could feel the love in the room you want your guests to remember your wedding you do you want them to experience something that is a form of magic they've never experienced before that's how I felt I wanted the wedding to be about me and Jonathan and the one thing I did care about the guest experience is that I wanted them to have fun and they want I wanted everyone in that room to know how much Jonathan and I loved each other that this union this marriage is forever that this is something to celebrate and I think the biggest thing that I can tell you or advice I can give to you is that you and your partner set the tone for your wedding day you do the decor does not the food does not set the tone it doesn't the dessert does not the cake does not the open bar does not I mean it sets a little bit of a tone but the tone of your wedding is determined by you and your partner so be aware of that and just if you are having the best night of your life everyone around you is going to be having the best night of their life and if they're not then that's their problem and you weren't going to please them anyway just a piece of advice now that my wedding was two months ago um i have loved talking with people and it brings me the most joy when they tell me how much fun they had and how much the wedding was so memorable and filled with love i can only speak to my experience and that's all I have to say about that. So yeah, that's all I have to share with you on this topic. If you want to hear more about my wedding, I never sat down and just kind of recapped the wedding. I do have my wedding video that you can see on my channel and I have a ton of other videos from before the wedding, but I didn't do a video sitting down and talking about how it all went and the little details. I'm happy to do that if people want me to do that, but I also don't want to just overshare everything and have you guys be like, all right, we're done hearing about your wedding because I could talk about it forever. So that's pretty much it. I mentioned some things that if you're interested, I will link down below. Just let me know in the comments. Um, again, if you want like the wedding playlist or if you want the sweat wicking underwear or whatever, I am here to help you and I will always provide a good link when I can. So thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, I hope that you subscribe, like this video, stick around, hang out with me. I post videos every week and I love meeting new people. So definitely say hi in the comments if this is your first time here. And I'll see you in my next video.